have your Bibles, I want you to go with me to the book of Mark. Mark chapter 6, we're going to be looking at verses 1 through 6. Mark chapter 6, verses 1 through 6. When you find that, just type amen, I got it. Listen to what the word of God says. It says that he went out from thence and came into his own country and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence hath this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and of Judah and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, and among his own kin, and in his own house. And he could do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Thus is the reading of God's holy word. It can be tried, it can be trusted, and it is already blessed. Just for a little while, we would like to share on this topic this evening. Only believe. Just go ahead and type that right there. Only believe. Let us bow for a word of prayer. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, we thank you, dear Lord, for this opportunity to share your word. Now, Father, I ask you to use me as your instrument to impart life and strength and help and faith and hope, O oh God, into those who hear. That those who have ears, let them hear, Lord, what the Spirit is saying in this day and time. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Only believe. Now, we as born-again believers must realize that the world system of believing is vastly different from the Word of God. Yes, the world says seeing is believing. In other words, I have to see it first in order to believe it. However, God's word is totally opposite, which is you have to believe it first in order for you to see it come to pass. In other words, instead of seeing is believing, God's system teaches that believing is actually seeing. Therefore, if I can only believe, then I'll be able to see all of God's goodness in the land of the living. But, but how can we be so sure not to miss out on God's best for our lives? How, how can we avoid missing the breakthroughs? This is the year of double. How can I avoid from missing out on my double, missing out on the opportunities that God places before us on a daily basis? How can we avoid limiting what God can do in our lives and the things that we can do through Christ Jesus? Because the Bible does say, that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And the same power that brought Jesus back from the dead, it resides on the inside of us, which enables us to receive all that God has in store for us. Now, I don't believe any believer would want to settle for second best. All of us as believers should want to be all that Jesus Christ said that we could be. But there are some attitudes that can either help us or hinder us in our walk with the Lord. Just, just like a key can, can turn both ways. It can either lock or unlock. 
Therefore, we must discover those attitudes and responses which unlock the opportunities and the breakthroughs and the promises of God in our lives. And one major key is the simple act of believing. We're talking about only believe. So I didn't just type believe, only believe. Now here, here in our text on this evening is a story of Jesus going back home only to find a group of people who oppose his teaching and his ministry. Mm. And, and, and as he and his disciples were there, he began to teach in the synagogue on the Sabbath day. And as usual, his teaching was awesome. Mm. Could you imagine Jesus teaching the word? In other words, the word, teaching the word. Mm -hmm. How many know in the beginning was the word? And the word was with God and the word was God and the word became flesh. So here the word was teaching the word. And he talked as one who had authority and not like the scribes because he gave them insight into God's word. And they were so astonished. As a matter of fact, the scripture says here that they said, where did this man get these things and what is this wisdom given unto him and such miracles which are performed by his hands? Yes, they were amazed. And in fact, they were asking some of the right questions, but the problem came in their answers. Rather than allowing Jesus to answer for himself, they began answering their own questions. Yes, here in verse 3, it says, this is what they said, Is not this the carpenter's son, the son of Mary, and the brother of James, and, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Now, what they were portraying here in the text was not faith, but rather it was unbelief. And we know this because in verse 6 it says, And he marveled at their unbelief. And the message here is really simple, my brothers and sisters. Unbelief limits the power of God. L let me say that again. I said unbelief, it limits the power of God. God, And as a result, our text says that he could do no miracles there except he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and he healed them. In other words, because of their unbelief, Jesus was limited. Now the power of God, it was working in their midst, but it was hindered and they missed out on the breakthroughs and the blessings of God. But, but this evening, let's just take a closer look at their unbelief. And let's examine what prevented them from believing in the Son of God. Well, the first thing we want to look at in the text, number one, is the cause of their unbelief. What was the cause of their unbelief? Well, look again at the answers they gave to their own questions. We see here, they had limited views. Yes, they were limited by what they could see, by what they could touch, by what they could understand. You see, what they had before them was the Messiah, the soon coming King, the Son of the living God, but what they saw was the carpenter, the son of Mary. Yes, their limited views kept them from seeing who Jesus really was. In other words, they had stereotyped Jesus and couldn't see beyond their own natural understanding of the carpenter's son who grew up with them in their own community. And in much of the same way, we limit what God can do in our lives because of our limited viewpoint of him. Therefore, we must learn to see beyond our own natural understanding. We, we don't have to understand how a thing works in order to receive it by faith and to receive the benefits in which it brings to us. The Bible teaches that we are to walk by faith and not by sight. 
Because walking by sight, it limits what God can do. And though we have a tendency to want to understand the ending from the beginning, but sometimes we, like Abraham, must leave where we are and journey to a place in which God has not yet told us. My brothers and sisters, that's faith. Yes, sometimes we, we must respond to the command of Jesus when he says, only believe. Somebody just type or say, only believe. But not only did they have limited views, they also had limited hearts. See, these people didn't want to believe because Jesus, after all, was one of them. Yes, they knew him. He grew up in their community. They were familiar with him and his family. After all, didn't they know his father and his, his mother and, and his sisters and his brothers? Oh yes, they had all watched him grow up. How could this little boy who grew up in the same neighborhood with us be anything more than we are? So not only could they not see, they didn't want to see because they had limited hearts as well as limited vision. And the Bible says that they were offended at him. In other words, their own egotistical pride would not allow them to accept that he was so much more than they were. And guess what? Oh, Jesus understood this. That's why he said in verse 4, that a prophet is not without honor except in his own hometown, among his own relatives, and in his own household. My God. So therefore he knew because of pride that they would not receive him as a prophet. But unfortunately the scripture says in order to receive a prophet's reward, you must first receive a prophet as a prophet. Now had they received Jesus as the son of God, they would have been recipients of his ministry and the miracles. But, but because they received him as a man of the flesh, they lost their opportunity to be touched by the power of God. And they missed out on the miracles, the blessings, and the breakthroughs that Jesus wanted to get them. You see, limited views, it means limited lives because unbelief locks up the possibilities that could happen in our lives. But you must be willing to believe in order to receive. That's why I stopped by on this evening just to remind somebody to only believe. Somebody just said right there, only believe. Type only believe. But, but not only do we see the cause of their own, own uh, of the their unbelief, but secondly, number two, we we see the consequences of their unbelief. What what are the consequences of their unbelief? Well, the first consequence is that the power of God was locked up. Notice it says in verse five that He could do no miracles there. Now it didn't say that Jesus would not do miracles. It said He could not. Why? Because unbelief. It locks up the power of God. In other words, it limits what God can do in the lives of his people. Now, now don't get me wrong. God is no less powerful because of our unbelief. It is simply that he designed for his power to be used or released in response to faith. Just like there are, no, are, are natural laws in the universe, so are there spiritual laws as well. Things are designed to work in certain ways. We may try to make them work otherwise, but we will never succeed. Because the power of God is designed to be released as we trust God by faith. Somebody just type by faith. But not only was the power of God locked up, but the provision of God was also locked up. Yes, Jesus, he came to his hometown with a desire to minister to them, to meet their needs and to be a blessing to them. But because of their unbelief, the provision that God had desired to give them was locked up. Only a few believing folk were healed. The vast majority of them did 
didn't receive anything from God because unbelief it not only locks up the power of God but it also locks up the provision of God and then the third consequence of their unbelief was the promises were lost as believers we are the recipients of the promises of God. In fact, the Bible states that all of the promises of God in Christ Jesus are yes and amen. In other words, God made his promises because he desires to give us his promises. And it's through faith that we receive the promises of God. But through unbelief, we miss out on all that God has for us. So in order to be recipients of the promises of God, we, we must respond in faith. These Nazarenes, they didn't respond in faith, but in unbelief. And they lost the opportunity to receive the breakthroughs and the blessings that Jesus desired to give them. But on the other hand, if we respond in faith, the promises of God becomes ours. The Bible teaches that everything we receive from God, it must be received by faith. In fact, it says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. So beware of the consequences of unbelief, which limits the power of God in your life. That's why you must learn to only believe in God. Believe what God says. Somebody just type one more time only. Only believe. So yes, these Nazarenes, Jesus' homeboys, his, his relatives, his, his kin folks and his neighbors, they couldn't receive from him because of their unbelief. And, and, and we've taken a brief look at the cause of unbelief and, and the consequences of unbelief. But, but, but third and finally, we're going to close by looking at the cure for unbelief. Well, what is the cure for unbelief? Well, this really should be obvious. The cure for unbelief it's faith. But what is faith? And how do we receive it? Well, faith is having a complete trust in the Lord Jesus Christ without wavering or doubting. Now, I'm not just talking about having the knowledge about God or the knowledge about Jesus Christ, but truly trusting in him. It is the trust that we should have for what Jesus can do in our lives is a trust that is born out of a relationship with him. It is a trust which comes from knowing him in a personal way. That's why when we get born again, we ask Jesus to become our personal savior. I can't get saved based upon grandma's belief. I can't get saved based on my mama's belief or my, my, my daddy or granddaddy's belief. Even though they could have been deacons in the church and on the mission board and sung in the choir and they were faithful and even preaching the word of God, I've got to have my own personal relationship with him. Mm. You see, rather than expressing limited views based on limited knowledge, we must be willing to adopt the attitude that God can and he will work in the midst of us if only we will believe in him. But how do we come to this place where we truly believe in him, where we truly trust in him, where we're willing to step beyond what we can see? Well, there's an important biblical answer to that question, and the answer is found in Romans 10 and 17, where it says, So then faith cometh by hearing, uh, and hearing by the word of God. You see, faith, it grows as we uh, give attention to what God's word is saying. And as we open the Bible, as we study it, as we seek God in prayer for, for him to reveal by his Holy Spirit the lessons that are contained in the Holy Writ, then we will be able to have the eyes of our understanding enlightened. And then we can hide the word of God in our hearts. And then our faith will grow. Many times Jesus had to rebuke the disciples by saying, Oh ye of little faith, how long am I going to be with you with that? And you still don't believe. So faith, it can grow. But listen, faith also 
must be nurtured. Because a believing heart, it doesn't just simply happen by accident. No, a believing heart is developed. And as we come to understand and know Christ better through his word, we will also come to understand the faithfulness of God. We'll go through something and God brings us out. And we can say if he brought me through that, he can bring me through this. And we know that God is a God who keeps his promises. He's faithful. And how many know that God is not a man that he should lie? Nor the son of man that he should repent. If he said it, he shall surely bring it to pass. So I must have faith in God in order to receive his promises. Because without faith, it's impossible to please him. Without faith, I can't even receive from him. Without faith, I can't believe in him. That's why every born again believer must have faith in God. And faith, it is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things that I can't even see right now. And this kind of faith only comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And when faith becomes real in my life, it begins to teach me more about the God whom I serve. Yes, faith teaches me that my God never fails. Faith teaches me that my God is an awesome God. Faith teaches me that there's nothing too hard for my God to do. It teaches me that my God is always on time. That he's never too busy to hear me when I pray. Yes, faith teaches me that my God is a miracle working God. A water walking God. A storm chasing God. A body healing God. A trouble fixing God. A God who supplies all of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Yes, he's a God who's able to do exceedingly, abundantly of all I can ask or think according to the power that's working in me. Oh, he's a wonderful God. He's a merciful God. He's a marvelous God, a forgiving God. Who never gives up on us. Even when we mess up. He's right there to help us get back up. Even when we get off track. He's right there to help us to get back on track. That's the kind of God that we serve. And it all begins with a willingness to believe in what God says. You see, unless we are open to the possibilities of God, we will never see what we can be. And we will always be limited to what has been and what is now. So the challenge for us is to always maintain the attitude that God can do anything but fail. Yes, we must let God be God. And continue to expect him to do great and mighty things for us, in us, and through us. If we only believe. Somebody just type it one more time. Only believe. Well, my time is up, y'all. It's for spent. And I thank God for yours. Come on, put your hands together. Give God praise. If you receive that word on tonight, just type, I receive it. I receive it.